podcast time, baby. Featuring Aaron Stoll, part two. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please, on behalf of the flight crew, this is Michael Midnight, your captain speaking. Let me welcome you aboard the Mike Tech Studios podcast, headed to our next episode with Aaron Stoll. We should be touching down in on around what drives you and your passions about what you love to do in local time. And that's, of course, depending on this oncoming headwind approaching, and that's assuming I decide to actually land at our destination. I've been meaning to take a vacation in Hawaii. It's just looking pretty damn good right now. Folks, we just hit our cruising altitude of 11,000 feet, and I have turned off the seatbelt light, which means you are now free to move about this intro as you need be. However, for your own safety, please fasten it when you are seated. In case we encounter any unexpected turbulence, commercial breaks, battle zords, Godzilla, or my ex's ego. Say Godzilla, we're gonna get sued. We now return you to your in-flight entertainment. Thank you for choosing the Mike Tech Studios podcast, and you have yourself a good day. What has worked best for you as far as for networking? What's been your experiences, you know, the best way to network and, you know, for people to really get to know who you are and and to stand out in that manner? Probably through social media, honestly. Really? Social media is everything. (laughs) What would really stand out in your mind, you know, when you did see this type of activity for a potential, you know, employee or this candidate trying to get your attention? What would would work for you? That's a really good question. That's when you know you have to think about it. That's when yeah. Jimmy says, this is a really good question you got. That is, yeah. If I was a candidate and you were you were an owner and you were looking to have somebody stand out, let's say, you know, obviously you do IT. So let's say you want somebody, you, you obviously want people that are not just necessarily good at what they do, but you want them to be a good fit. Someone that actually shows genuine interest in my company that not only sends a request a connection request to me, but someone that actually takes the time to craft a message that actually would hit on the company culture and that they are truly interested. Interesting. Now, would you take somebody seriously who maybe went through your website and spell check something, uh, you know, pointed out a couple of things that could be done better or maybe made a suggestion in a cover letter or an intro conversation? Or do you think that maybe might not be a good idea? That would be a terrible idea. (laughs) And why would you say that? If the candidate messaged me with corrections on my website. That would upset you as uh, as an employer? Absolutely. I didn't know that. I've actually gotten interviews that way, believe it or not. So (laughs) that's why I was Really? Oh. Yes. Well, I guess I could say it depends. It depends on the, the client. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the industry as well. Like I said, for my background, you know, doing design work and marketing and and things like that, it is about attention to detail. So if I'm looking at somebody's website or they just posted a couple of articles and very obvious errors, I'm not sure if the owner of the company or the hiring manager has checked or knows about this. So I have, you know, again, this is just on the consultant side of me, you know, thinking (laughs) is I look at it and then I say to them, you know, hey, listen, I've noticed this. This is what I do. You know, based on my experience, you might want to take a look at X, Y, and Z. And just having that conversation, maybe not initially reaching out to them and saying, you know, cold, you know, like a, like a cold message on LinkedIn and saying, you know, hey, yeah, your website sucks. Fix this. Love me. Like I wouldn't do that. But I think that there would be a time and place to be able to, to mention those types of things especially in an interview and things like that. Absolutely. I think right off the bat, no. That would probably put a bad taste in the employer's mouth. But if you had already established some sort of relationship or in an interview, I think that would be okay. That makes sense. That's fair enough. I like to sometimes play both sides of the table. You know what I mean? Just to, just to make <laughs> yes. sure. So with the with the IT recruiting, what is like the biggest headache that you have when you're vetting new candidates and trying to make sure that they know what they know as far as whether their background or their coding? Like what's what's some of the hurdles that you've come up with, uh, you know, in the process? Vetting is always fun. One of the best parts about recruiting. <laughs> But I've ran into candidates that give me these resumes that look amazing. They've got all these skills and you think they're just so incredibly good and solid for the role and you talk to them and they can't elaborate on their skills. That is very frustrating. So I would recommend if you don't have the skills, if you don't have anything to back up what you're putting on paper, don't put it on the resume. Agreed. Now, would that be frustrating? I I agree. And and especially (laughs) when you are hiring somebody specifically for that 
skill set and then you realize they just slightly mention that and that's not really something that they're into or you know have full senior knowledge of when you see these experiences is it something where maybe just the uh, potential candidate is a little socially awkward about speaking about it or they just flat out or not they don't know what they're talking about at all or they're not familiar with it at all it goes both ways they can be socially awkward or they know nothing Yeesh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you have the purple squirrel that you're looking for, which is always amazing. <laughs> but very difficult to come along by. So. It is. <laughs> You know, with all the craziness that's been going on with the country recently, you know, if there was somebody from the recent generation who wasn't born here, but, you know, they, they saw what you did, they looked up to you, they you know, they really respected you, effectively were just inspired by what you do, and they were listening right now, what would be something you would, you would tell them? Don't give up and trust. If you find a recruiter that you can absolutely trust, I would work with them because nine times out of 10, they are there to help you. Awesome. I like that. Inspiring and short. <laughs> so I like to wrap up the podcast episode usually with uh, what I like to call the, the story time aspect of it, where we give one horror story. So this would be a horror story experience that you have had as a recruiter based on like a candidate or something like that. And then following it up, ending with like a good note and a good story that you've had placing somebody or, you know, whatever, whatever experience that you've had. Horror story. Wow. <laughs> a few horror stories, but I can think of one that just happened. I found what I thought thought was the perfect candidate, called the person, one word answers. To me, that's a horror story. If you can't get the information out of the candidate and he sounded like <laughs> he was half of a bottle in, maybe more, and literally gave me one word answers. I could not get him to talk. And I even asked, you know, I can call back at a later time if that's okay. Still wanted to talk, but gave me one word answers. Wow. It was awful. It was absolutely terrible. And it was uncomfortable too. <laughs> and this was like an IT uh, program? Yes. Or yes. Maybe he's just not used to talking to women. I don't know. Am I intimidating? I don't feel like not, I sound not, intimidating. Not to me, but you're talking to the wrong person. I run a podcast, so I talk to people. <laughs> This is true. I'm just trying to give this guy the benefit of a doubt, I guess. I don't I don't know. I mean, that's just, I've never given anybody a one word answer in my life. Yeah, that, that does suck. Um, that would be a nightmare. Not not in the way that, you know, other people would normally think of it, but I, I agree with that, so. I couldn't get him off the phone. That's just so strange though. It was very strange. Why would you make a phone call and then not talk? I hate when people do that anyway. So it's that's not even recruiting related. I just, my mother used to do that to me all the time. When we first got phones, I'd call her. She wouldn't answer the phone and she'd text me what after I, after I called her. <laughs> and it's like, if you would have picked up the phone, you would have known what I wanted, Ma. That's the whole <laughs> one of the phone call. I can't, you know, so it's just some people just, phones are not their thing, I guess. What can I say? Uh, agreed. So... <laughs> Yeah, well, I you know what I like that. That's that's a short and sweet horror story to the point. <laughs> what, what about something cool? What about something uplifting or a candidate that really you know ended on a good note? There are a handful of candidates that have stuck by my side. I've not been able to place them at various jobs for various reasons. A lot of them, you know, something fell through with the company or the the position, but they've stuck by my side and they trust me. They're willing to work with me, and there's a handful of those, and I really sincerely appreciate them. You just haven't really been successful in placing them, but you would recommend them to other people if possible and really just keep them in your inner network as, as like first recommendations? Absolutely. That's if I cool. can't help them, then I will find somebody that can place them somewhere else. That's really cool. And, that, and that's usually not something that you hear a recruiter saying. They don't mm -hmm. have people on backup. To be able to have a recruiter say, hey, no, these are good people. I just, I haven't found a good, and that happens. Right. As a recruiter, you're going to have more candidates available than you do jobs. jobs. Right. And you just, it's like, who do I pick? Right. And I'm not just going to place candidates anywhere. I'm going to make sure it's the right fit. That, I think, is going to be our good, awesome story. Erin, I do appreciate you being on the podcast with us. You can find Erin on LinkedIn or through her website at erinstolmusic.com. That's E-R-I-N-S-T-O-L-L music.com. Erin, I appreciate you doing this. I appreciate your time and being on the podcast. And thanks a lot. Thank you so much. This was great. Bonus. Anyone who is listening to the podcast and is interested or in need of a position or IT help or placement that Aaron is available for with IFU Solutions, we've actually set up a special raffle of sorts for listeners of the podcast. So here's how it works. You connect with Aaron on LinkedIn, letting her know that you've heard our podcast together. Also, look for Mike Tech Studios on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. If you haven't subscribed or followed or shared our content recently, feel free to do that too. 
using the hashtag the singing recruiter send us at mike tech studios a screenshot of this podcast in your horror or success story with a recruiter you'll be entered into a drawing to win a great prize directly from erin two random winners will receive her latest album as a download code from itunes two random winners will receive an autograph signed by erin herself along with a download code for one song off of her latest album and an even luckier winner as a grand prize of sorts will get both an autograph as well as Aaron's latest album, Unfinished. Have your own recruiter candidate story that you want to share with us? If you are listening on YouTube, comment below. If you're listening on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, or your podcast app of choice, feel free to email your experience to go at miketech.tv. You can also find our full conversation of this episode on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Mike Tech Studios. That's M-I-K-T-E-K Studios. Thanks for checking out this episode and feel free to like, subscribe, and share our content. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is Michael Midnight signing off. Mm -hmm.